we're talking about, you know, APIs and what they mean in particular business contexts. And I want to try and tie together some of the themes we've heard about already today, um, about how an organisation should plan the way that it's going to exploit this uh, opportunity. And, I mean, the... have created huge amounts of shareholder value. Um, and it's turned out, you know, by examination, that effectively APIs have been a key part of how they've done that. So some of these monster organisations have retained a surprising amount of flexibility and agility in the way they operate and the way they've been able to crush and eliminate com competitors through APIs that have been hidden within their solutions. And it's been a period of huge amounts of innovation. So entirely new business models. We've heard this morning that people are starting to analyse what the overall set of possible business models associated with APIs might actually be. And in some versions you see 18, in some versions you see 20, sometimes slightly more. But that taxonomy of business models you know, shows the range of ways that people extract value from API-based uh, opportunities. And in Facebook's case, they pretty much created a new channel for other organisations to contact and analyse consumer base, consumer preferences, consumer behaviour. And the whole idea originally of how Google were going to make money, they dominated search, but how are they going to make money? Well, they said, actually, this is not nearly as difficult as you thought it was. We're just going to put these adverts on here. So whole new ways of monetizing information flows across the internet have as I say, created quite phenomenal amounts of shareholder value in these particular cases through massive amounts of innovation. Now, one of the things that is therefore very tempting to uh, assume is that what these folks done, um, you know, it's the way ahead. So all we have to do is, is copy the success uh, of these massive companies uh, and we can all retire um, to buy one of the beautiful islands just off Stockholm and... Um, uh, live out our lives in comfort. Um, but, you know, really it's not quite that simple. Uh, as Tom was just saying, um, even from a technical point of view, there's lots of ways to get this wrong. Um, from a business engagement model, you know, it adds a whole new dimension of ways of getting it wrong. Uh, wrong can mean missed opportunity, so that um, we're seeing in most industry sectors, you know, close competitors are currently, you know, struggling over to find what is the right idea. You know, what is going to be the winning idea that folks are going to have to follow if they want to be competitive? But it can also mean reputational risk, enterprise risk. It can mean um, you know, other, other forms of loss through um, uh, basically doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. So in, in my experience in this sector, apart from, apart from where we have direct competitors trying to address exactly the same business problem, I haven't really found two organisations with exactly the same set of requirements in this space. Okay? So probably, probably, you're not going to be able to copy anybody. At this stage, at the level of maturity we are at the moment, you're going to have to work things out for yourself to a certain extent. And that means understanding some of the context. Um, we've heard a bit around the kinds of business drivers that you see you know, producing API solutions and um, uh, driving them forward. Um, New ones emerge all the time. Uh, we're seeing a very st strong trend at the moment around um, automation of data center operations on a whole new uh, abstracted level. Uh, it's pretty much a an IT and technology driven solution. It's pretty much around cost reduction rather than um, revenue increase. So I won't talk about that one too much. But it shows that you know, new ideas and new opportunities will arise. I think the emergence of things like uh, cloud applications and things like the various uh, mobile devices and new channels to consumers um, have shown in the last few years how difficult it is to predict you know, where the endpoints are actually going to go and what folks are really going to engage with. Uh, you know, pretty much your safest prediction is that whatever you're going to predict is going to be wrong. Uh, and that means agility, flexibility, um, remain very important aspects of however the solution gets moved forward. And you, know, you see that even with the very biggest names in the API space, that, as I said before, one of their success factors has been how fast they've been able to change. Um, Google in particular, you know, the daddy of, of APIs, um, has had a policy where they, they are quite happy and willing to uh, terminate APIs and product lines which they feel no longer fit 
the appropriate direction. Um, of course, they can do that because they're Google and they're the daddy of APIs. But in a context where you're trying to engage existing business partners or new customers with whom you wish to have a long-term relationship, it may be that kind of uh, approach of just culling APIs which aren't quite working. Yeah, that's, that probably isn't going to work. So although you have to move quickly to take account of, uh, advantage of the opportunity to hand, it has to be sustainable. You, know, you have to be able to carry people with you. You have to be able to uh, make mistakes or have solutions which aren't quite perfect, which don't quite match the need, um, but then you have to, be able to move forward from it. Sustainability is very important. And yeah, one of the most famous U-turns in API space was Netflix. So having been the poster child for API for a while, how they built their business by providing APIs that other people could um, present through end-user devices and front-ends to access their content, they've effectively reversed that decision, recognised that the, the front-end consumer experience was a terribly important part of what they were offering. So they've reversed their strategy completely. So yeah, the message is that even if your idea is a good one, exactly how it gets delivered, exactly to whom it gets delivered, it's likely to evolve and change, either because you know, your ideas will improve or because competitors will come and show you how you should have done it. You know, whatever it is, um, rapid movement is likely to be part of what you have to do. So there we are. There's massive amounts of value um, available. You have to go and find it yourself. No one's going to draw you the map with the big X on it. Um, but you have to be willing to change and evolve. So clearly there's some, some structured thought to be done. Um, there's an Einstein quote around um, innovation not being a logical process, but it being the result of a logical process. And one of the um, you know, tools I like to use when we're, when we're thinking about um, this kind of aspect is... Um, uh, it's got the timer on. Goodness me. This kind of diagram. The... Um, it's called an Osterwald uh, business model canvas. And it allows you to capture in a very sing simple and single picture some of the core components of a business model. So you kind of, you're talking about which markets you're addressing. You capture what your value proposition is to them. And uh, fundamentally, you start to identify the resources that it takes to, uh, to support that model. You know, who you're going to work with, who the partners are, what revenue model it's going to produce, what cost structure it needs to support it. Now, this is clearly a summarizing device. But one of the things we see in, um, in APIs, is if you talk to an organization, if they're really engaging around this subject, they may come up with very many ideas of how they could possibly work it, you know, either facing their consumers, facing their suppliers, facing new third parties, you know, trying to create new combinations of information that might be of uh, value to certain consumers. So this kind of structure for a very rapid summarizing analysis of an opportunity we find it very helpful for a kind of comparative point of view. The reason I've got the X in the key resources box is because that's really where the solutions of API management vendors such as SOA software you know, starts to play. It's part of the resources need to support, needed to support an API initiative. But really, it is only part. It's the part I'm most interested in. But um, organizations who are going to be successful will have to uh, do other things as well. But in terms of approaching that idea of resources, there are certain kind of best practices that we see emerging which simplify that, that thought process. You know, innovation works best where you don't have to think about the basic mechanisms, you're just concentrating on the idea. So although we don't necessarily know what the answers are going to be for particular businesses, so what a hotel and leisure group should really be looking to do or what a logistics group should really be looking to do, what we can talk to them about is how they should be thinking about it and the kinds of pitfalls, you know, the kinds of lessons learned from other industries that can feed in to what's likely to be successful and what the success factors support it are going to be. Now, one of the nice things about APIs, you know, because of the value that some of those big names have produced, is they do get good levels of business engagement. So folks are interested in what they can do. Um, that means that people are generally willing to consider them as part of the enterprise portfolio of products. So you know, whether it's a manufacturer, a uh, financial institution, you know, they, they are ready for APIs to be valuable. That means that APIs are worthy of investment. Now, that's quite unusual in this kind of technology. Over 
you know, the past decades, some of these kind of ideas have been available, but it's been very difficult to get them funded because it's been quite hard to tie them back to direct business value. And that's partly why that business model canvas is important. Because if the organisation can focus on APIs as if they were a product, it starts to put them in mind of a life cycle of um, you know, understanding what the market opportunity is, creating an initial solution, testing it in various ways against the market, evolving it into later versions, you know, launching, rollout, support, all of those kinds of concepts are very important to making the API successful. And if the company will treat it as if it's a product, fund it as if it's a product, that's going to be a great way to keep up the momentum once it's going. Because um, top quality APIs you know, do need support. They need organisational support. And um, entirely new roles um, around engaging the folks who are supposed to use the API. You know, who are the customers going to be? How do we get them? Um, how do we get them engaged? How do we keep them happy? How do we make them successful? So there's an idea of evangelizing whatever it is we're trying to do. Now, these kinds of roles and these kinds of ideas are some of the things that software companies are fairly used to do, fairly used to doing you know, over their history. So it does kind of raise the question if every, every company will become a software company now. You know, is that really what we're saying? Um, not quite there will be aspects of software company behavior that most companies will now have to learn and adopt, you know, wherever they've come from. Some of the ideas around uh, software product management will start to become uh, important. And new processes as well, new business processes. The idea of um, you know, finding a user of your API, getting them to the point where they are in use, and then possibly later getting them off again. You know, they're kind of new things that have to be thought through. How are you going to retire things and retire people? Um, and as part of the solution, as part of enabling the solution, there'll be this idea of an API platform. Now, exactly what that comprises, that's the part that really differs between organisations. And you know, when I said about, in the title of this, what it was that um, Facebook and Twitter didn't, didn't tell you, it's really around the API platform that's going to be right for your organisation and your particular initiative. As I said, I've, I've rarely seen two which are absolute template copies. And um, in this new market, even the API vendors are still learning about some of the possibilities as we engage with new customers who say, well, actually, things that are important to us include these kinds of ideas. Um, it kind of falls to us to get product that will um, support those things as well. So the idea of the API platform and what it's going to have to do um, comes down very much to what kind of resources it's going to use. So one of the interesting things about um, people like Facebook, Twitter, um, Google to a certain extent, Amazon almost not at all, is that they've created entirely new worlds. And most people in most enterprises, when they're thinking about the question, you know, what do APIs mean to us, they're not thinking about creating entirely new worlds. They're really thinking about leveraging the information that they already have to hand. So who is this information of value to and how do we present it? Um, they're possibly creating incremental services and incremental products to um, you know, propositions that they already have, but they're not necessarily creating an entire new platform and an entire new world. And that really you know, comes back to some of the points that Tom was talking about just now. You know, enterprise APIs are different. They have a completely different set of technical requirements. And... Um, one of the things that uh, we certainly find is that folks' use of um, enterprise resources within their API scheme will almost definitely change. Um, even if you think that you have nothing of value to offer, it's often combining it with other things. So the idea of um, using information from your enterprise solutions with, from, uh, with data from uh, uh, solutions that you're in your partner network, you know, those kinds of ideas become very powerful when... Uh, properly um, presented to the right users. But if it's going to be enterprise APIs, and if it's going to use uh, enterprise resources, then you know, the implementation drivers do start to fit in some of those categories that Tom started to, to uh, highlight. So security becomes probably paramount. Not always. Depends what the information is. I think if the information is entirely new and for this application only, security is often less important. If it is something like financial transactions or it is something like customer data, security probably becomes the number one uh, requirement. 
Obviously, productivity. So how quickly can we get our uh, APIs into production? How quickly can we change them and at what cost? That's a very important aspect of um, assessment. But you know, the one that I bang on about the most is really this idea of sustainability. I think we're seeing a lot of folks get off the ground with a first generation solution, uh, which is starting to get some level of adoption in certain parts of the market, but it's on an unsustainable basis. Um, fundamentally, they can't change it. And as we've said, whatever you guess first time out is guaranteed to be wrong. Um, the ability to change will become the defining factor. So although first mover advantage um, is all very nice, um, unless you're planning to retire within the next couple of years, you, know, you might need a plan B as well to carry you further forward. So it's worth thinking about some of the capabilities that are going to be necessary. Um, Tom talked about some of the security stuff, so I won't talk about that. But there were some kind of um, subtle ideas around how the API is accessed, how you present it, how you package up um, rights to use. Um, the idea of licensing, as I say, comes back to this as a software product. It's like licensing a software product. And when, it's, when you come to construct product bundles, that's quite a convenient vehicle. OK, what will I license people to do and how will I charge them for it? And then, as we've said, how much of it they can use, that really comes into the field of quota management. So once I've given them rights to use certain parts and certain functions, I'm going to say, and you can do so 100 times a second or 1,000 times a second or whatever it is. And I need to be able to protect myself against abuse, you know, control that um, access so that effectively we, you know, we are um, delivering the service that we uh, promised and folks are consuming the product that they contracted for. As we've said, the idea of managing the community of partners who are accessing uh, APIs, you know, it's pretty neat, obvious that you're going to need that kind of thing. And in certain circumstances, there are going to be specialist requirements like PCI compliance for the whole platform. Okay, so if you're taking things like card details, if, it wants, if you want it to be a payment transactional platform, then obviously PCI is going to be essential. You can either um, contract with a provider whose platform is PCI compliant, or, um, which is an emerging opportunity, um, uh, in the past, it's kind of been necessary to build your own platform and have it PCI certified, and anybody who's done that will know how much fun that is. So um, you now have options around how you know, some of those specialist requirements get, um, uh, get realised. And you know, really, in our view, these are the kind of categories that you need to be thinking about your requirements against. Okay? So we've talked about security. That really falls into that gateway services piece. So when folks are actually accessing my API, what's happening? We've talked about engaging folks. That's the developer piece, obviously. And through all of this, you get the ability to analyze what's going on. So is your API being used in the way that you expected? You know, so you'll often see that the, um, the parts of an API that are useful aren't quite what you anticipated. And that gives you the driver for change. Okay, so insight, information, and um, a driver for change really feeds into that bottom one. And I'm back on my sustainability point again. The, idea, the ability to manage the life cycle of what you're doing so that changes are predictable, the impact of changes are predictable on your systems, on your user systems, and your user experience, I think that's going to be key to success in moving forward quickly and incrementally. Um, and avoiding some of that Google kind of API culling outcome. Another thing that um, you'll find it very difficult to predict is where the platform should be. Um, you'll see people talk about cloud platforms for APIs. Very useful where you're doing that kind of new world application thing. So you get all the elastic scalability that you'd hope for in that kind of environment. Um, less obviously relevant where you're heavily using existing en enterprise applications to supply data, because they have particular requirements which may well benefit from having solutions very close to them, so effectively in the data center. So in the cloud, in the data center, a bit here, a bit there. Again, it's one of the areas where, um, in our experience, people will almost never know what their requirements are accurately. So they may feel they have a preference. They may feel that the initial ideas drive them one way or the other. Um, but with our customers, we find 
pretty soon they find another reason to have a different model. Um, I think the most common outcome actually will be that folks have all three of these for different parts of their API, for different APIs to different user groups. So that's it really. You know, there's lots of choices to be made, lots of decisions to be made. Um, and the kind of way you know, the vendors help is, as we've said, we have the products that will meet any of those models, you know, supply any of those capabilities. Um, it's just a question of identifying which ones are appropriate at which stage. So it's almost a prioritization rather than an elimination of options. Um, clearly, we have specialist skills around implementing security schemes and user identity schemes and all those kinds of things. So kind of getting it in, getting it working, um, getting it ready for adoption to support whatever marketing programs you're going to put around it. And, and as I've said, you know, our experience of business models and successful programs means that we can you know, usefully engage a conversation, typically a three-sided conversation, business, internal IT, uh, and ourselves, to talk about you know, where the business opportunity really is, you know, what the obstacles to extracting business value are, and therefore evaluating opportunities, prioritizing them, uh, engaging that program to actually start delivering stuff. So that's really what I wanted to, um, to say. Um, it's about you know, making choices and, and being bold. You know, if you know that your solution is flexible and sustainable and can be changed, that actually reduces part of the risk that you're taking by doing something different from the others. And um, you know, some of the great innovators of the 20th century kind of realized that you couldn't just follow the pack. It was uh, for you to come up with your own ideas. So thanks very much.